Okay, a heat pump stats video. Heat pump costs and efficiency are really impacted by the weather outside. So how have we got on this year? It's felt like winter's lasted forever. Maybe spring is on the horizon. But the question that everyone is asking is what do the stats say? What has the weather meant for costs? How much are we saving versus a gas boiler? How does it compare to previous years? Well, the start of 2025 has been cooler than the last couple of years. We've not had too much of like really prolonged, very cold weather, but overall, it's been a cool start to the year. And I'm not necessarily basing that on average temperatures, although the Met Office says that UK temperatures were 0.9 degrees lower than, uh, than average in January, but I'm using a metric called heating degree days. This is the number of hours multiplied by the number of degrees below the temperature that we'd, we'd need to, to have any heating on in a home. I hope that makes sense. So let's just get into the detail. If we export the number of degree days at the weather station closest to me, that suggests that January and February have been 15% cooler in 2025 than 2024 and 20% cooler than in 2023. This will mean that all of us would have used more heat to keep our homes comfortable. For those with gas boilers, more gas than last year. For those of us with heat pumps, more electricity. So how much more electricity have we used this year? What has the cooler weather meant for heat pump efficiency? Well, let's get into the figures. If we have had 15% more degree days, that could mean simply that we've used 15% more heat. Is that what's happened? So in January and February 2023, our heat pump delivered 3,880 kilowatt hours of heat. There, in that year, there were 581 degree days in those months. So we delivered 6.67 kilowatt hours of heat per degree day. In 2024, we had a big jump in the heat delivered, 4,454 kilowatt hours of heat, but we delivered more heat degree, per degree day as well at 7.3 kilowatt hours per degree day which suggests we either heated the house more and were more comfortable, or we used more hot water in 2024 than 2023. And I think the reality is that we were away for some of January 2023, but not 2024, so we didn't heat the house as much. Anyway, we'll get into too much detail. And this year, we jumped in, we jumped again in the amount of heat that we delivered to the house to 5,233 kilowatt hours and 7.5 kilowatt hours per degree day. Instead of 15% more heat that would reflect the number of degree days more, we delivered 17% more heat. I really should have kept much more detailed note of the changes that we might have made to, to our settings on our heat pump and compare the number of days that we were living with a warm house in terms of needed heating. But whatever, we have delivered more heat this year, which may be because of the cooler temperatures, or could have meant that we were much more comfortable this year. So how did the cooler weather affect efficiency? Well, between 2023 and 2024, our efficiency went up from a COP of 2.91 or 291% efficiency in January and February to a COP of 3.33, meaning we basically used the same amount of electricity, but got more heat out. For 2025, our COP went back down to 3.0. Coupled with using more heat, we used 30% more electricity this year, which let's be honest, sounds costly. But how would we compare for the same comfort from a gas boiler? We'll come back to that. Colder weather means that we need more heat, but also means heat pump efficiency drops. But by how much? Well, let's get even deeper into the stats. I've got lots of data from the last couple of years and, and plotting daily heat pump efficiency against daily average temperature, I can plot a graph that helps estimate heat pump efficiency at different external temperatures. The data has a trend line with the equation y equals 0.11x plus 2.78, which means at zero degrees outside, we'd expect to see a COP of 2.78, at five degrees, 3.33, at 10, 3.88. You can do the maths. External temperatures do have an impact on heat pump efficiency. So if you were to search average temperatures where you live and assumed similar performance to me, you could try to estimate average performance for a similar system at your temperatures. Maybe this isn't a perfect estimate, but it will give you a rough idea of what you might expect. 
And I guess I should say that this December, rather than January and February, was, was really quite a different story. It was mild. So this December had 16% fewer degree days than last year. And that could have meant a corresponding re reduction in the amount of heat that we required and an improvement in efficiency. Well, that was true to some extent. We actually delivered more heat in December 24 than December 23, 4% more. And that could be because we spent all of Christmas week at home this year and used more hot water because we had family visiting for most of that time. Or it could mean that we have been more comfortable. We use 4% more heat, but actually we only use one kilowatt hour more electricity. So our efficiency was higher this year than last. 3.55 or 355% efficiency for December 24 compared to 342 for December 23. The slightly milder month did contribute to high efficiency, even if we've used a similar amount of electricity. We did get more heat and more comfort out. Okay, so the numbers are a bit nuanced and maybe this is way too much detail. Good job if you're still watching. But the obvious point stands, which is that colder temperatures means we need more heat and means that we would have also have lower efficiency. This is also true of fossil fueled heating system like a gas boiler but it's maybe a bit more pronounced in heat pumps. So what about costs to run this winter? We need really high efficiency heat pumps to give good savings. That's right, isn't it? Well, for our system, our average rate was about 20 pence per kilowatt hour over the last few months. Um, we're on a smart tariff from Octopus uh, called uh, Cozy Octopus, which is designed for heat pumps. So that means that for December, our costs would have been around 5.6 pence per kilowatt hour of heat for Jan, uh, our cost 6.97 pence per kilowatt hour, and for February 6.25 pence per kilowatt hour of heat. An efficient gas boiler using a price cap tariff would have had a cost around 6.7 to 7 pence per kilowatt hour. So even with our colder January making our heat pump less efficient, we could have saved versus a 90 to 95 percent efficient gas boiler throughout the winter. So a 95% efficient gas boiler would have cost £544 to give us the same comfort we experienced this winter from our heat pump. And our heat pump cost us £470. And then for emissions, the thing that I think is the most important, even with the lower efficiency in January, our heat pump would have saved 359 kilograms of CO2. In December and February, around 290 kilograms of CO2 each. So over those three months of proper winter, the heat pump would have saved almost a ton of CO2 compared to a gas boiler providing the same comfort in our home. This is something to celebrate. Meaningful emissions reduction, a small amount of cost reduction, a warm, comfortable house with all the hot water we needed during the coldest months of the last few years. Clearly, heat pumps don't really work and clearly they cost way too much to run. Okay, I hope that's been a helpful or interesting video with all our heat pump stats from this winter. Do comment below with any thoughts or questions. I will try my best to come back to all of you. Thank you and see you next time.